Hi, Kelly Eckhold here to update you with the key events of the week. So this week we got a bit of information on the current state of the labour market. The labour market has been of key interest to all commentators given that the labour market has been pretty tight and it's been one of those factors that's really fueled inflation as well as being a key constraint on businesses. Um, the view for the labour market from all commentators, including the Reserve Bank, is that we expect to see the labour market cool off reasonably soon, such that the unemployment rate drifts up from the current very low level of 3.4% to somewhere in the 5 to 5.5% range, depending on who you ask. So what did this week's data tell us? Well, it generally told us that the labour market is cooling off a little bit, um, Westpac's own employment confidence survey uh, shows that there's likely been a small tick up in the unemployment rate in the current quarter. But running against that was StatsNZ's monthly employment indicators, which suggests that the rate of jobs growth is continuing to outstrip the supply of new labour coming from strong inward migration. So overall what that tells us is the labour market hasn't really cracked yet. Globally, the key piece of information we got was the outcome of a big conference of the world's largest central banks, which occurred just in the last couple of the days. And those central bank governors all concluded that inflation is proving to be very resilient and that interest rates were going to have to rise and remain high for a good while to come. Locally, we also had a, the release of a business confidence survey, which interestingly showed that business confidence has improved from quite low levels, but quite notable because for the first time in a year or so, the number of businesses expecting conditions to improve exceeded the number of businesses expecting conditions to deteriorate. Cost indicators appear to have declined a bit, but still remain at pretty high levels. And interestingly, indicators of labour costs and labour availability still remain to be a key constraint for businesses. So that's it for the week. I'll talk to you again next week.